award-winning teen novelist Joyce Stryker. I'm here at my cabin, relaxing, writing my next novel. It's about a golden retriever, Sparky, who gets himself into a lot of trouble. But in the end, it all works out. And they all fuck. Um, I just wanted to let you guys, <laughs> my audience, <laughs> know what I did with my day today. Ding dong. Um, I was reading. <laughs> I was reading a lot about conspiracy theories, okay? Uh, who was really behind 9-11, which I found out. That's coming in the next video. Um, but I'm at this thing. I'm at um, cypherpunks.to. And I'm reading about the Trusted Computing something association, maybe. And they have this thing called uh, TPM chips. TPM chips. TPM chips. What does that stand for? <laughs> my, informa my information retention has gone down quite a bit since I became fucking crazy. All I know is that I love feces. Feces. Trusted platform module. It's a little chip. Uh, they're selling it. It's coming in laptops now. And um, I don't know if they, I don't know if it's on PC motherboards, but they're definitely they're definitely 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 gonna have them on Apple computers, um, and they have them in uh, in current IBM laptops. They probably got one in your laptop. You're probably using one right now. And what it is, it's a little like black box. It's completely enclosed. You can't get into it. And basically, um, it was developed by it was developed by these assholes. Uh, these motherfuckers right here, founded in 1999 by Intel, Microsoft, HP, Compaq, and IBM. So you know it's going to be a good product that's going to take you to the next generation, the next level in computing. Is this product right here? And it's a um, and here are all the member companies. These are the people who are buying into it. As you can see, there are 170. This is a, an old PDF, so there's probably more now. But all your favorite technology that you're going to buy. Um, you got O2 Micro, you got NVIDIA, you got Novell, all these companies, they're in there, they're doing it. Uh, Adobe, of course. Um, and what it does is, it is basically like a fingerprint for your computer. It, it makes it so that whenever you go on your computer, it's proving that it's you. And um, one of the nice little byproducts, which is why these 170 companies are, are in this deal here, is that uh, if you try to use... Conceivably, if you try to use soft, software that is uh, pirated, it's not going to let you, or it'll report you to the police. It'll send you the send the microwaves. I don't know how this stuff works. It'll send. It'll send, basically what it does is it microwaves the airwaves and gets it. Uh, you know, bounces off satellite receptor beams. This is all technological terms here. But what it's going to do is um, fuck your life up. Um, and like. Uh, you know, I really, that really gets my goat. That really gives me a problem, really gets me going. So then what I did was I found this article. I looked it up on MSNBC, because you know I go to msnbc.msn.com for my news. So I found this article by Michael Rogers. It's a six-year-old article, but I'm going to let it haunt him anyway. And he's saying, he says, um, anonymity is a thing of the past, and maybe that's a good thing. And online child predators will get caught, because they'll be this and that, and the TPM chip is ultimately a benign technology and it just matters how we use it whether it's a good thing or a bad thing I'm summarizing and I'm using his gay little voice because that's the way he probably would say it um, this is potential good news but some critics are worried that the TPM is a step too far their concern is up, 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 um, wow ultimately it isn't evil or good yeah right you fuckhole that's why that's why there's so much money in it. That's why they paid for it, because it's not inherently evil. Okay, it's for goodwill of society, sure. Good for you, you fucking fuckhole. Anyway, this guy, so the guy who wrote this, he is the quote-unquote practical futurist. And he makes a living... He makes a living going around stages at like businesses and and uh, standing like that, because um, if you stand behind the podium, it's stodgy, it's outdated. Okay, he's in the, he's in the crowd, he's mingling, and he goes around and he does his little budget version of uh, a TED talk. He talks about where the future's going, but it's all 
This guy's a fucking hack. I hate him. I hate this guy. It reminds me of a teacher I had at Carnegie Mellon named Craig Vogel, who was a piece of shit. Um, Craig, I know you watch my videos. I know you're a 50-year-old professor. I know you watch my videos, and you're a piece of shit. Music.com and vice president of the Washington Post Company's new media division, he expanded the reach and definition of these media giants into the 21st century. As futurist in residence at the New York Times, no the company's business units toward greater innovation and a better understanding of the future. A best selling science fiction novelist with patents in multiple No technology. He is listed in Who's Who in science and engineering. Now he harnesses his powerful oh. understanding of technology, demographics, economics, politics, and our culture to help you define your own future. <laughs> I was a tech kid, an electronics whiz, and I always thought I was going to grow up and be an electrical engineer. So when I went to college, I studied physics. But my hobby was writing short stories, and midway through college, I began to sell stories to magazines. So I thought, this is interesting, and uh, ended up studying both creative writing no. and physics. After I graduated and went to work for the Washington Post... This guy rips off Tim and Eric. ...the new media, which really brought those two sides of my mind together... Uh, but I was also involved in figuring out how to make these new products into businesses. So I learned about the business side. And now those have all come together for me. Uh, storytelling, which is a way we learn about the way the world works. Storytelling. Technology, which is all storytelling. I told you. I told you. In the Ashton Kutcher video, which is also on this account, I told you, look out for that buzzword, storytelling. Oh my god. What did we learn about storytelling last time? We learned that anybody in any industry, if they're trying to appear sage-like in uh, 2011, all you have to say is storytelling. It's such a magical thing. It's like, um, it's like this is an old thing, okay? Every, everybody knows this one. Uh, that kids, kids are so innocent and so creative. And boy, <laughs> I had a problem at my work, and I came home, and my son, little Johnny, he had solved the problem. He was playing with his crayons. It's just the imagination of kids, okay? In uh, so in the '90s, you had you had this. The teacher sat on his chair like this, okay. And then a little after that, you had how imaginative kids are. And now you have storytelling. And this guy is a fucking. If I could, uh, if it came down to, um, if I had a moral choice to make, if I had to, if it was release fifty murderers from prison. Or uh, punch this guy in the balls for an hour. I would get I would get greedy and I would choose ball punishment. This is his most viewed video. Two hundred and twelve that I could find. Most viewed. Two hundred and twelve that I could find. God, what a fucking cesspool this is. Social media marketing by Pam Brossman. Five hundred and eighty views. That video's probably been up for five years. Fuck the world. Okay, let's get back into this here. Halfway always through. Changing and always fascinating. And then finally, the business piece is very important. How do we take these great new ideas and turn them into something that actually works. Probably with storytelling, Mike. Worked with organizations all over the world in major industries, including telecom, education, finance, media. When it says when it says worked with these indus these companies, look at look at the quote. Michael presents as though he is talking with you versus at you. He's someone who you would love to be seated next to at any event. So when, he, when it says he's working with Microsoft and working with Intel, what that means is he goes up on stage at meetings or birthday parties and talks about the future. It doesn't mean anything. Healthcare manufacturing. Monsanto. Monsanto. Oh, my God. This guy is an asshole. Monsanto is literally the worst corporation in the world. They uh, genetically modify seeds and rice and shit to keep the third world in the toilet that it is. Oh my god. Manufacturing, biotech, and energy. He tailors his insights to each individual audience, providing immediate... They liked his storytelling. It led to a sense of excitement. ...for his listeners. What I like to do is spend time with a company before I visit and really learn about its culture... Fuck its you. ...history, how it approaches innovation, what challenges it's facing, and what they expect from me. Very often, I'm doing... This, uh... You know... I like, to, I like to tease my mom a lot. I like to, uh, when I was 17, she walked in on me, and I was naked in the closet uh, painting a, a swastika. And, um, you know, I don't like swastikas, okay? It's a hate symbol. I was just doing it for the, the shock value, okay? I was 17 years old, making lots of mistakes. But I think that what this guy has chosen to do with his life is uh, 
so much more, oh my god, just infinitely more poisonous and damaging and sucking the life out of everything than if I were to be painting swastikas in my closet all my life, okay? And that's the point that I try to argue with my dear old mommy all the time, but she never gets it. You never get it, mom. Oh, shit! A keynote speech to open a conference or a meeting that's thinking about the future. I try to make those keynotes very optimistic. Uh, there's a strain of futurism that likes to talk about extinction and dinosaurs and sort of scare the audience. I don't think fear is that great a business motivator. I think opportunity is. So what I like to do structure a speech around what I think the opportunities Dude, fuck are this for guy. a company in the future. And very often in companies I deal with, the very leading edge IT projects are given to younger workers. Fuck you. They have the latest tools, they have the latest training. But Take your hands they, apart. Stop talking with your hands like a fucking of what the kindergarten of teacher, like needs. Steve Jobs. So I really emphasize that senior management needs to be involved that we have to really work hard to make sure that we're not losing some key information as we move everything into this digital world. Those are storytelling hands. Michael is a captivating, entertaining speaker with tremendous media and stage presentation experience. His topics range from technology to management, communications to strategic development for the challenges ahead. What's most important to me and most satisfying is to leave Fucking my kids? clients and audiences with a real sense of what they can do next. Oh, your story told them. Not just sort of a vague sense of what the future will be like. Um, these days, I think we need concrete steps that can result in improved productivity or more market share or greater customer satisfaction. The days for think tank experiments, I think, are, are long past. We need to think about the future these days in practical terms. Michael Rogers, the practical futurist. For more excerpts Eat from Michael's shit. television and speaking appearances, please choose from the menu screen. Oh my god, that's so draining. I, uh, I've talked to... That video's been up for one year. I just made it the 213th view. Um, uh, yeah, here's his YouTube account. That is the most viewed one. Writer, speaker, and consultant. What a piece of shit. Um, I talked to uh, Charles Carroll, a.k.a. Charles, 187 Charles, from time to time. And we talk about um, uh, just the way things are going and dystopia and uh, the hell that we live in. And one conclusion, we, ought, we butt heads a lot, we disagree a lot on a lot of stuff, but um, one thing that Charles and I, if after about you know an hour and a half of talking about this stuff, um, the one conclusion we're able to agree on is that uh, in a world where someone like this gets to fly under the radar and, and make a living and probably put two kids through college. Um, maybe the people, maybe the masses are so, maybe the masses are so stupid uh, that they deserve it and that we should just be doing the same thing. Maybe that's the right answer. Maybe we should just um, try to... <laughs> oh, that's, a, that's an ugly thought. I don't like that. Mm, nah, nah, nah. Anyway, so to finish this video up, um, I'm writing. Here's an email I'm writing to sweet old MR at practicalfuturist.com. And I'm writing. I'm going to have to finish this while I'm talking to y'all. Michael, I just read an article you wrote on TPM chips about how they might be a good thing. Sorry. It might be a good thing how it's just technology and how we choose to use it, blah, blah, blah. I just wanted to give you some feedback because the comment on the MSNBC website is broken. I want you to know that you have no spirit. You have no sense of humor. You are a functionary of life, a gear, a machine, nothing more. The parts of your life that don't involve procreating, eating, and dying could be summed up in a very neat little paragraph. And the next paragraph, I'm just going to, I'm not going to write it now because it'll take too long, but I'm going to call him a human toilet and tell him he's, uh, he's a little fuckhole and, uh, and, uh, really wish him well. Um, 
That's all. Just wanted to let you know what I did with my day. Smosh.